Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to wire up and program a 16x2 LCD character display for use with your Raspberry Pi. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to print messages to the screen module, as well as display the current time and also understand all of the code behind this. Here is what you'll need in this video. First off, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. This tutorial will work with every single model, whether it is the original Pi, Pi Zero, or as I'll be using, the Raspberry Pi 3. Ensure that your Pi has the latest version of Raspbian, and this can be downloaded from the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website. Note also that we'll only need to type commands, and thus for this video, you'll only need a keyboard. As you'll need to download software, an internet connection will also be required. Next, you will of course need the LCD display that we'll be using. These units are 16x2 backlit character liquid crystal displays that work over the I2C protocol. Usually, screens like this require quite a bit of complex wiring, however this particular one has an I2C module on the back of it. This means that not only can we use the display with the Raspberry Pi, but also use it with just four wires. As I have mentioned, this display is a character display, and that means you'll only really be able to represent letters, numbers, and other characters. These screens can be picked up from somewhere such as Ryantech for very cheap prices, usually under £5. I will be using a 16x2 display, however this tutorial should also work for larger units using the same driver chip, such as this 20x4 character display. Finally, we will be connecting the LCD to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. This only requires four wires and these will need to be the female to female variety. You can find links in the description below to places where you can purchase all of these items. Now, let's wire up our display to the Raspberry Pi. If you turn the LCD around and expose the back of it, you'll see that there are four pins labeled Ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. These are the pins that we will connect to. Firstly, grab one of your female to female jumper wires and connect the pin labeled Ground to pin 6 on your Raspberry Pi. After doing this, ensure that you've connected everything properly and securely. Secondly, using another of your jumper wires, connect the pin labeled VCC to pin 2 on your Raspberry Pi. This is the plus 5 volts pin, and coupled with the ground connection previously, powers the display. Now you'll need to connect the two I2C lines that actually do the communicating between the Pi and the display driver. These are called SDA and SCL on the module and have to be connected to the respective SDA and SCL pins on the Raspberry Pi. First, let's connect the data line, SDA, to pin 3 on the Pi. Finally, hook up the clock line, SCL, on the display module to pin 5 on the Raspberry Pi. This synchronizes the data from the Pi, and with those four wires connected up, you can now boot up your Raspberry Pi and install the required software. Let's do that now. So with the Pi powered up, log in and make sure that you're connected to the internet. For ease of use, I've created a suite of demo programs and an installation script that will set up everything for you. To download this, simply type the following command, git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash the hyphen raspberry hyphen pi hyphen guy forward slash lcd and hit enter. Once this is downloaded, if you list the contents of the folder you are currently in with the command ls, you'll see a new directory has been made called lcd. This is where all of the code is stored. Next, change into the lcd directory with the command cd lcd. Again, if you type ls, you'll see a variety of programs. Before you can run any of the software here, you must first run the installation script. This grabs all of the stuff that our code will depend on and changes the necessary settings on the Pi. You can run the installer by typing sudo sh install.sh and hitting enter. At the end of this installation process, your Pi will reboot, and after that, you'll be ready to make your display work. So now that your Pi has rebooted, change back into the LCD directory with the command cd lcd and list the contents once again with the command ls. As you can see, there are two demo programs that I've coded in Python. The first is demolcd.py and the second is democlock.py. Also notice that the library for all of the LCD related Python functions can be found here in the lcd driver.py file. This is what our code will rely and call upon. However, it is not actually too important 
and the real code lies in the demos. Now we will analyze these and then run them. Firstly, I'll open up the demo LCD program as this is the most basic example. You can do this yourself too with the command nano demo underscore LCD dot PY. This brings up all of the code that is required to flash a few messages onto the LCD display. Over the first couple of lines, the program imports the other Python code needed. In our case, the LCD driver to make the display work as well as the time library to allow us to use delays. I have then loaded the driver and set it to the variable display. This is all that is needed in the setup section of the code. Now in the main body of code, we have a while loop that will continue going round forever. In this while loop, we experience the way of writing strings of text to the display. This is done with the command display.lcd display string. This is a very simple function that just takes a string and asks you what line you want to print it on either the top row of the 16x2 display or the bottom row. The code then sleeps for two seconds and displays another string on the top row. In the final part of the while loop, the program calls upon another function display.lcdclear. This does as the name suggests and clears the display of any data. This code will continue looping around unless a keyboard interrupt is detected. In that case, the display is cleared and the program ends. Now, how do you run this Python script? Exit the text editor by holding Ctrl and X, and then simply type python demo underscore lcd.py and hit enter. You should see your display spring to life and execute the code that we just looked at. If your display does not look like it is working properly, or if the results are strange, then most likely you've got the contrast set incorrectly. This can be changed with a screwdriver and a quick twist of the potentiometer on the back. When bored of this, you can kill the program by holding Ctrl and C. Finally, let's take a look at the demo clock program. Just as with the last one, do this by typing nano demo underscore clock dot py. This program is a little shorter than the other and serves the function of displaying a clock on the bottom row of the display. As you can see, the setup of the code is the same as last time with the same importing of the LCD driver and time libraries. This program also features the date time library, and this allows Python to know what the day and time is. Further down, and the body of code is again very similar to last time. Here, a string is printed to the first row, and this does not change throughout the program. Another while loop is initiated here, and the time is written to the display with the command date time dot date time dot now. This has to be surrounded by an str in order to convert it into a string for the display to use. Similarly with last time, you can exit the program with a keyboard interrupt. Now, how do I run this Python script? Again, exit the text editor by pressing Ctrl and X and then simply type python demo underscore clock dot py. You should see your display very rapidly displaying the time. You can exit by pressing Ctrl C. And that's it for this tutorial. Today I showed you how to wire up and program your very own inexpensive liquid crystal character display. The code used today is well annotated and I hope that you tweak it and let me know what you do with the display in the comments below. I've been the Rasu Pi Guy and make sure to subscribe, like and share for more tutorials, reviews and informational videos. Until next time, bye!